the proclaiming and receiving of the word. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it. His hands molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is the Lord our God. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Today, if only you would hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the wilderness. When your forebears tested me, put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long I loathed that generation and said, it is a people who err in their hearts, for they do not know my ways of whom I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Now normally we read the Psalm half verse about, uh, but I not know whether you've uh, finished your part of it or not, so I'll read the second line with you as well. So as we'll read the whole of our portion of Psalm 116 together. I love the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he inclined his ear to me on the day I called to him. I shall repay the Lord for all the benefits he has given to me. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. O Lord, I am your servant, your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer to you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord. In the midst of you, O Jerusalem, alleluia. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 5, beginning to read at verse 1. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our gospel reading is from the gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 9, reading from verse 35. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. 
Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaan, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts. No bag for your journey, or two tunics, or sandals, or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy, and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. And if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable in the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them. For they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and father his child. And children will rise against parents, and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly, I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I mean, several new phrases have come along over the past uh, few months. Uh, one of them is that we now greet each other with the words, keep safe, or look after yourself, or mind how you go. And we seem to mean it uh, with more fervor than perhaps we would have meant it in days gone by. There seems to be an urgency uh, and a pertinence to it when we say, mind yourself or keep safe. We have been under threat from the most deadly of diseases, a pandemic the like of which hasn't been seen for a hundred years. Thanks be to God, these things don't happen very often. Uh, And we pray that soon life will be restored to a more normal way of going. And gradually, bit by bit, we will be able to gather slowly. We've made a beginning today. And you're allowed to smile about that because you're participating for the first time since Lent. For the first time, actually, since St. Patrick's Day in our parish group, you're participating in congregational worship. And uh, that's a wonderful thing to do. That doesn't mean we haven't been able to worship in our own homes and uh, we've done our best to facilitate that 
in the parish. And I know not everybody's online and not everybody can access what we can do. And that's a frustration. But we can only uh, do what's within our capacity to do to reach out uh, over the months. But congregational worship, of course, is our norm that we get together, that we gather like those first followers of Jesus did. In the Acts of the Apostles, which we're studying in our midweek, we will see soon how they continued to gather, actually on a daily basis, at the colonnades of Solomon in the great temple in Jerusalem. They gathered on a daily basis. And they met on the first day of the week, which is, of course, Sunday. They met on the first day of the week to worship. It is the day, as the, the song goes, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that he rose again. This is the day that the Spirit came. The first day of the week has been a feast day of the church from the very beginning. They continued to keep Sabbath from the first star in the sky on a Friday night to the first star in the sky on a Saturday night. They kept Sabbath, but they added the first day of the week to mark the weekly celebration of faith in the risen Lord Jesus Christ. And yet today, over 2,000 years later, we continue to worship on the first day of the week. We continue to gather. There have been times over those 2,000 years when it has been dangerous to gather in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not because of threat of a pandemic, but because of persecution and hardship. If you've ever been to uh, Rome on your holidays, I haven't yet, uh, I may yet do. If you've ever been to Rome on your holidays, you can visit the catacombs. You can do the same in Malta. I've been there. And you can visit the catacombs. The catacombs were underground tombs that go back way before the Christian era. But the Christians used to go down among the tombs to worship in secret because there were those who were seeking them out to destroy them because of their faith. You see, our faith has always come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we truly come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, he has taught us and he told those first disciples, you will face trouble, you will face persecution, you will face tribulation. You overcome by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the word of your testimony and the blood of the Lamb. You shall overcome in the name of Jesus. You shall overcome by being that witness in the world, proclaiming the kingdom of God and the good news of salvation. Our bodies will inevitably perish. And oftentimes the bo people's bodies perish because when they proclaim Jesus, people came against them. We are living at the end of an era, a particularly long era in the history of the world. When the church, up until maybe two generations ago, held a very powerful place in society, held a very prominent place in our consciousness. People referred to church, went to church, and if they weren't in church, they were staying away from church. Now it's the other way around. People aren't staying away from church, they just never come. They've just never been involved in church in new generations. That takes longer to creep out into the country uh, than it does around the, the great metropolitan areas. But there are huge swathes of the Western world where people have never ever been brought up to know anything about the Christian faith. You see this if, like me, you like to watch quizzes on the television. Everything from the chase to university challenge. I occasionally get one of those questions right. And you, you go on and you, and you see it and somebody is answering questions on nuclear fission. And the next minute he'll answer a question on Karl Marx. And the next minute he'll answer uh, a question on ZZ Top. I have to mention them. Uh, 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 he mentioned uh, ZZ Top uh, uh, or, or something like that. And then that person will be asked a question. To whom did God give the Ten Commandments? Oh, I don't know anything about that. To whom did God promise uh, a covenant? Never heard anything about that. Who ended up in a lion's den? And you don't know what answer might come out. Gandhi, maybe. You know, you never know the answer. Because people don't know. Why do they not know? 
because they have been disengaged or their families and the society in which they live has been disengaged from church for a very long time. We've made every effort that we can, and I'm sure we could have done more. We can always have done more to try and ensure that people have been able to engage with our churches in the parish group as much as possible, as much as we've been able over these past number of months. We will have a job to do as we gather back together for open congregational worship in our buildings. And that time will come. We will have to proceed according to all sorts of regulations and that will be different and difficult. But we'll do it and we'll get through it. That time too will pass. But from conversations I've been having with people over these last few months, everybody's concerned. Have we lost our congregational worship? Have we lost it forever? Has it blown away on this wind of tragedy and sadness in our society? And it's a valid question. I'm not going to give a smart aleck answer. You know, people have come and said to me with, with true anxiety in their voice uh, and a real anxious look in their eyes and said, you know, will we ever get everybody back together? And in many respects, that's up to us, every one of us, to make every effort to encourage our families and friends who normally would have worshipped to come back to worship. Necessarily, there'll be those among them who say, I've had to take all sorts of precautions. I've been shielding for months. I may have to take precautions for many months yet to come. I'll be back when I can, but I'll be not back immediately. We have to look as to when those of us who, thanks be to God, have been in full health can come back together. And then another phase when some more people can come and another phase when more people can come. And it will happen in due course. But it's up to us to encourage one another. That's a calling upon every Christian to encourage other Christians. Look to your left and right. Be friendly and encouraging to those people you know, who've turned out today. They may come from a different congregation to you uh, within the group, but encourage one another. Say, it's nice to see you. It's lovely to be together, isn't it? Isn't it wonderful to have, have been here for worship today? And we have to move on from a place of making our church a difficult place to come into to making our churches a place that is welcoming. And you might say, well, we don't make our church difficult to come into. But that's my perception. I might think I'm a great, I'm a great fella. For the most part, I don't think I'm a great fella, but I might think I'm wonderful. I think you're all wonderful. Why would anybody have any difficulty coming along? Sure, aren't we all nice, smiley, friendly people? Most of the time we are. But we need to make every effort, not just to encourage people to come back into congregational worship, but to come back within the sound of the good news of the gospel of the kingdom of God. That the Spirit of God might reach into our worship, reach into our hearts, and through us reach to other people. That they might know that it is a good place to come, a warm place to come, a place of refuge and sanctuary, peace of mind and goodness. And we need, in many respects, to get over those things that cause us personal difficulty. I'm going to say something to you now that might sound rather harsh. And I don't want you to go home and say, well, I got up out of bed and Alan told me off. I'll never tell you off, all right? But it might sound a bit harsh, this. And I did say it to the church in the west of Ireland as well. Our churches will close not because of some great movement within the hierarchy of the church. Our churches will close if we're not better at getting on with each other. If we don't make every effort to avoid being critical of one another, arguing among ourselves, holding lifelong grudges. You see, I've only known you for coming up on three years. I've known a couple of you for three years. The rest of you I've known for coming up on three years. Uh, and uh, I didn't go to school with you. So the person in the car next to you might have pulled your hair when you were seven. I don't know that. And you mightn't like them because of that. They might have stolen your lunch money. I don't know what sort of a blackguard or a rogue is in the car next to you. But we are here to worship the God who forgave us our sins. And it is incumbent upon us to be 
a community of forgiveness and grace. And take this as a challenge to your heart and soul as I do. Are we above all other things a community, a gathered group of people, a community of forgiveness and grace? Or have we got the jukes up permanently? We're Ulster people. The jukes come up quickly, don't they? So we need to really say to the Lord, transform my heart, soften my heart. If there's anything in me, O Lord, that prevents someone from coming, deal with it. Deal with me, Lord, gently but firmly. Deal with my heart, O Lord, that anything that is within me that is an obstacle to anybody else in the faith, that is a stumbling block to anybody else in the faith, that it might be removed. And I know I'm painfully aware after 35 years in the ministry that there's probably a whole lot about me puts a whole lot of people off. That's just human nature. But I need to present it to God and say, is there anything that I do that gets in your way, God? Your way of blessing that holds back other people. When we reopen, we need to open from the heart out to the door so that people as they come through the door may see and know that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life, the Lord of our lives, the Lord of our congregations, the Lord of our parish group, the Lord of my home, the Lord and Savior of everything we are. Because when he is, he transforms us. He transforms us individually and communally. Let us commit ourselves that our churches will open, but open right out wide to whoever might come along. We may be back together here again another couple of weeks if the weather's kind to us again. Thanks to the Lord for this. You know, and we'll come back together again. we we'll probably have to do it maybe two or three more times before we get the doors open uh, safely for everybody to come. But come and worship the Lord. In the beauty of holiness, let us bow our hearts and bow our knees to him and affirm the good news that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the Son of God and he offers salvation to all. May it be seen in my life and in all our lives to the transformation of our community. In his blessed name, amen. Turning to page 10 in your service sheet. Let us proclaim our Christian faith together. Normally you stand up for this, don't you? Okay, only those with some roofs are allowed to stand up. Okay, we're going to affirm our Christian faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and grant her government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless those whom you have chosen. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and renew us by your Holy Spirit. God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, 
mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments, we may please you, both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we continue in prayer. We pray today for the church in all the world. We pray today for John, our Archbishop, as he settles into his new role in very challenging and trying times. Bless your servant John, O Lord, with the gift of your Holy Spirit, that day by day he may witness to you, not only in word, but in character and deed as well. Help him to give us the wise counsel and leadership that we will need over the days, weeks and months that lie ahead. Bless our parish group. Bless each one of our churches. Bless this parish church and all who worship here, the parish of St. Luke, Ballymar. Bless the church of St. Luke at Balik. Bless Christ Church, Kamala, in Bessbrook. Bless, O Lord, the people of the parish of St. Luke, Mulladlas. We commit ourselves into your hands, O Lord, seeking that transformational touch of your love, of your spirit, as your grace grows in our lives. Help us to be a blessing to all who come our way. Be with our families, especially those from whom we've been separated. And we all feel the pain of that. We pray, O oh Lord, for a healing of that pain and a reunion that we anticipate with great joy. We pray, O oh Lord, for those in our parishes who are ill at this time. And those who, because of the quarantine, have felt particularly isolated and alone. May you, O oh Lord, be their friend by the abiding presence of your Spirit, that they might be encouraged and built up. Help us, O oh Lord, this day to be a blessing in our ministry to those who have lost loved ones. And we are very conscious of the tens of thousands of families that have been broken by this virus, who have lost loved ones. We pray for those who minister to them. We give thanks for the extraordinary dedication of our National Health Service. Bless each one, O oh Lord, especially those who are exhausted by the effort. And help us to be responsible in the days, weeks and months that lie before us. And help us, Lord, by the richness of the love that you have sown in our hearts. To be a place where people feel at home when they join with us in worship. I'm going to ask you to do something now in prayer. I'm going to ask you, you might want to glance out the corner of your eye and see who's there. Pray for the person in the car that's on your right. On your right. That's that way. Okay. Pray for those people. Might be a family. Might be a single person. You might not know their name. Pray that God will bless that person. If you're on the very right, pray for the person over this side. Now pray for the people in the car on your left. Ask God to bless them. Pray for one another. Lord, bless each one of us here, each family group gathered. May the wonder of Christ be known in our lives. The forgiveness of sin, the glorious promise of resurrection, and the presence of your Spirit walking with us daily. And so, we come to the end of our prayers. Let us say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Going out as God's people, the Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. We're going to sing again and we're going to sing uh, now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices. Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. So just a couple of things to uh, announce to you. Uh, as I've alluded to on the way through, uh, we have a fair bit of uh, administrative work uh, to work through regarding the opening of church buildings. Don't fret, they will open. Uh, and uh, But we have to have all the safety precautions in place. It has to be done properly, uh, or we will be held accountable. Uh, and more than that, you don't just want to do things because you might be held accountable. You want everybody to be safe. So we will have to work through that. And as you're probably aware, it changes all the time at the moment, okay? So when we get clear final instruction, we begin working on uh, procedures that will be laid out for us. It's a, it's a changing landscape at all times. So uh, we'll continue to make the, the videos and uh, uh, probably uh, it'll all depend, and it really depend on Sam. You're wondering who Sam is. Sam's behind me here. Sam has done uh, a wonderful job with uh, the sound system because I wondered if I'd be heard. I can hear my voice bouncing back off the other side of the valley here. <laughs> yes, well done. You're getting a round of applause, Sam. Sam had to stop me playing trance music this morning. But anyway, <laughs> that was great. Thank you so much, Sam. You've got a great system here. And we'll see when Sam's available. Uh, he's in demand at the moment uh, for services uh, around the countryside uh, and uh, we'll certainly do this again in the next couple of weeks. Uh, if you're able to, to watch out for the videos on uh, YouTube, 
I hope they're a blessing to you and we'll continue to do that. I think we'll probably continue doing mid midweeks at least for the rest of the year at the very least so that you can participate in that. Uh, you're probably aware uh, there are buckets at the gate. Uh, those are uh, people have been again anxious what to do with my offering envelope uh, uh, and it's an opportunity to put your envelope uh, or some cash just into the relevant uh, one for your own parish uh, and you'll know perhaps for the next time uh, there might even be people saying to you what do I do with this envelope well you might bring it for them or better still get them to come but, but you know what I mean so there is an opportunity to make your offering uh, this morning and that will be dealt with uh, in the usual way. So thank you, Sam. Thank you to the church wardens and select vestry here uh, for being uh, willing to give this a go. Uh, and it has worked. Thank you. I mean, I said to uh, Nicholas during the week, we can only give it a go and we'll see if it works or not. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But it has, and praise be to God, I uh, am delighted. And uh, I just hope that you are, have been greatly blessed. Now, getting out... We don't want everybody to throw the car into reverse, okay? And you know that thing on the ferry where they say, don't start your engine till you're told and everybody starts their engine? Uh, so what we'll probably do, and I'll let the, the car park attendants guide you. So could you ever going to help guide the cars out, come to the fore here now? And uh, probably those of you who are on this side of the grass, you'd be directed to go up and round those bushes to go out so you don't have to go into reverse. So just take your turn uh, to go up and swing round. That probably means Alec having to reverse out, uh, but that's, that's okay. Uh, and I hope the rest of the day is a, a blessing to you. And as I said, I'd announce, I always look around for Anne at this point, because she tends to know what I've said I'm going to announce. That's okay, she went like that. All right. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Yes?